I showed some nice examples on the modular origami, which Angus Lavery made for me, but I realised there were some much better ones than this one, the one I showed, which I really ought to show this. This guy is good. This is one that I really found stunning. And an even better one, I think, although it's a bit battered now, is this one here, which has got a frame, which is cubicle, and inside of the box is a, is a little box running around as well, a little cube inside as well. What's astonishing about all this stuff, which is, you know, these are really most elaborate pieces, is the starting point in each, both cases is just something like this bit of paper, would you believe? This is not necessarily for these ones, but you can start with a bit of paper, you put it with a very, very specific speed, uh, uh, creases in it, but you have to do this hundreds of times because there's a lot of people has gone into there. And then you do a simple little fold, which is the most trivial, a small child could do it really, to make the initial piece. In this case, if I get it right, there we are. Oh, I have one more fold there. And the end result is, is amazing, the versatile, because of something as simple as that, when it's put together and lots of them in different colours, you're getting stuff like this appearing, which is wonderful. Some of the pieces I've come as fast, and you'll see many books actually on modular origami. Some of the books are big, big, big pieces themselves. So that's something I'd like to show. And one other item which had haunted me slightly on origami was I showed that um, most origami is done with bits of paper. I did at the time show the tin box that I made of silver paper. I also showed that um, origami also touches on napkins and towels, but there's another material which I completely flawed me. I eventually discovered where I'd hidden it, and this is this one here, which is a very strange idea. This is from uh, an art shop in Manhattan about 20 years ago, and it's called Ito Origami. This is a most peculiar choice of material for doing origami on it. Let me show what it looks like. It's so completely unlike ordinary origami paper. It's a sheet of fabric like this. I've got a fold in it already, which takes creases, semi-stiff and yet very flexible. And if you put two pieces, one in front of the other, you get lots and lots of lovely moire patterns, of course, all that stuff. But the idea is to actually fold this as if it's a sheet of stiffish paper. And the end result is something like this one here. This is my little box I've just been showing made of silver paper. Now it's made of this stuff here works elegantly. The, 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 the creases stay in position, which is very nice. And you can make some quite elaborate, I could do quite a few more folds. This actually goes into a little boat eventually when it's finished. Oh, and I had to have a go, of course, at my favourite one, which is the, uh, the, the the crane, all folded from a piece of paper. We'll see if I can get the wings to flap a bit. Flap, 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 flap. I also feel I need to put an eye on the front and the, and the back, so a bird should have an eye to look at. But this stuff is amazingly different to ordinary paper, and it's got this, of course, this translucence because there are little tiny holes all the way through it for making origami. What an astonishing idea that is. So if we can have that, we can have silver paper, we can have towels and serviettes and what else. So on the lookout, what else can you do in order to make um, origami? It's using new materials for an old, old art. And how? Okay.